Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader. We're last time. We um we got our new navigator. Her name is Cassia. Cassia? That's your name, right? Cassia? Cassia. Right? In order to, to uh obtain her though, or recruit her, I suppose, uh we did end up killing the entire uh group of navigators here. Including Theobald was his name and Falek? I want to say his name was or Felic, something like that. Um, yeah, but we now have her, and she seems to be pretty cool. I think she's really interesting feeling so far, what little we know about her. Um, and she's agreed to join us, so that's always good to have uh, another companion. So we can go go up or go to the void ship bridge. I think it's time for us to go to the bridge. We have a couple of injuries here we need to get treated. And real quick, I, I do want to thank everyone for all of their support so far for the game. Um, it's 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 nice to see when um, people are uh, you know helping out with uh, both me pronouncing words, which is always a struggle for me. And also just helping me understand the lore of this world. Because from what I understand, Warhammer has a pretty extensive lore. Like pre-established lore. For a second there, I thought I was thinking this was me. And somebody else was in my chair as it turned around. Lord Captain, Lady Navigator, welcome aboard. The Sanctum Navis has been prepared for the communion ri ritual, but if the Lady Navigator wishes to rest in her quarters first... Your heart starts beating furiously. Oh, this is trippy. I like it. Your breaths become short and choppy, and your fingertips tingle unpleasantly. You notice that Vigdis is shivering slightly, and the crew are glancing around in puzzlement, searching for the source of this sudden wave of unease. Without even looking at the Vox Master, Cassia waves her away. First, I wish to speak with the rogue trader. Leave us. Uh, of course. When you're ready for the ritual, please let me know. Later. Is everybody else going to leave too? Cassia sweeps her pensive gaze over Vigdis, then, lowering her lashes slightly, turns to you. What did you wish to speak about? Tell me more about what the ritual entails. First, you will do your duty as navigator. All other conversations can wait. We do not want to speak to you. Go to the Sanctum Navis. Now. What did you wish to speak to me about? Before I begin the ritual, I wish to look once again into the eyes of the woman whose fame is so great and managed to penetrate the imp impregnable walls of Yurik V long before we ever met. It truly is you, Imogene. The person the whole expanse and Calixus, se Calixus Sector are talking about. And now, a rogue trader as well. I didn't really realize I was that famous. After a few seconds hesitation, Cassia lets out a small exhale. And then raises her pointed chin. I have not yet thanked you for saving me on the station. My thoughts were clouded with so much mournful ash when Theobald's heart stopped. But he acted honorably and did not exploit me in my wretched position. And for that, I'm immeasurably grateful. I'm telling you, man. I, This game is just always saying the right things to me. You're already one of my favorites, calling me honorable. I'm so easy to please. I'm also deeply grateful that you saved my servants, especially my valet. My valet. Oove served on the station. Oove or Uve? Oove. Oove served on the station for more than five years, much longer than any who preceded him. He knows how to properly attend to me during journeys to the Immaterium and what to serve me for breakfast. His presence envelops me in a cloak of amber. But now, Cassia throws back her shoulders. I am ready to go to the Sanctum Navis and perform the sacred rite. I require brushes, canvas, and the best paints you have on board, but no red. Interesting. Why are you asking for these items? Now is not the time to indulge in painting. Tell me more about what the ritual entails. Why do you refuse red paint? I shall ensure all the necessary supplies are delivered to the Sanctum Navis. 
I'm not going to waste waste time satisfying these whims. Perform the ritual immediately. Why? You are asking questions, the answers to which you cannot comprehend. Perhaps I may explain it all to you at a later time, but now, our time is too precious to waste. As a navigator of House Orcelio, I give you my word that without canvas and paint, we have little hope of a smooth journey through the warp. I have no reason to lie. Why do you refuse red paint? Cassia gestures towards the servant standing beside her. Uv will give, her, give of his blood before the ritual. As always. Okay. Tell me more about what this ritual entails. I doubt the uninitiated could understand the mysteries of navigation. But I shall try to explain the essence of it. I must merge my mind and will with the machine spirit of the ship. So that I become one with the vessel. Cassia lifts a lock of hair from the back of her neck. Revealing gilded implant ports. After that, I use the House Orcelia ritual, which I am loath to reveal to you, to free my mind of all errant thoughts, and then... Then it is time to open my third eye and peer into the depths of the warp itself. Among the nightmarish visions, mirages, and creatures of the abyss, only the light of the Emperor is the truth that will lead me from star to star, from system to system. Oh, the light... The guiding thread, so fine it can slip from one's grasp at, at any moment. Cassia unfurls her hand, as though dropping something. But you have nothing to worry about. The navigators of House Roselio never lose their course. It's quite the promise. Uh, I will ensure that all necessary supplies are delivered to the Sanctum Navis. Cassia nods and thanks. I shall take my leave of you for the duration of the rite. I ask that you do not follow me. You can survive the gaze of my warp eye when it is opened. All right. Well, good luck. It's kind of loud in the bridge. Are you coming to talk to me? Yes. Lord Captain, I will oversee the open channel between the Lady Navigator and the bridge. And may the Emperor's Light help us all. Indeed. Rikad. The Vox Caster in the Sanctum Navis picks up the susurration of clothes, pious, cha pious chanting, and the metallic clinking of implants. Then the serene voice of the Lady Navigator breaks the silence, initiating communion ritual. Come here, Uv. The exultant ring of metal freed from its scabbard. The low sob of the servant, the rhythmic drip of liquid on the canvas, the faint whisper of the brush. Go. Footsteps hurrying away. I see. Violent, violet vortexes lashing an ocean with a million flails. And umber shadows, and umber shadows spinning over the surface in a fiery dance. A storm rising above foaming waters, armadas drowning in fog. The path from one end to another cannot be seen. And here, beyond the wall of glass, a daughter forsaken by her father yearns for her brother, and the sun's pale disk goes in tireless pursuit. Of her? No, of me. Its frozen rays lie, that spring is here, the light is deadened, the great ruler is gone. The Vox Master recoils as Ca at Cassia's words and accidentally snaps one of the co cogitators' levers. The panel beneath her fingers emits sparks and Vox Casters and the Vox Caster fall silent. She quickly flips a series of switches and bows guiltily. My abject apologies for cutting off the broadcast, Lord Captain. I've never heard the warp speaking through a navigator before. The connection is restored now. It will not happen again. Vox Master. See to it that you receive five lashes for this, this show of clumsiness. What is happening to Cassia? Cassia, you alright in there? Leave the Lady Navigator undisturbed. Continue the ritual. That is in order. Leave her undisturbed. Soul shredding screams down at the Vox tra drown out the Vox transmission. The servants in the Sanctum Navis are howling and shrieking like wild beasts, moaning in pain. Their throats raw from the strain, and then sudden silence. The dull thud of dropping bodies proclaims their fate. It it appears the servants were, ser were part of the Lady Navigator's right, as it was for her predecessor. 
I will arrange for the bodies to be removed from the Sanctum Navis after the ritual. Or what is left of them. Rogue Trader, I fear I have unfortunate news. Endless blackness has spread across the canvas, dividing what should be whole in two. And my sight cannot glimpse the light of the Emperor as closely as before. Clearly as before. I cannot turn around. My brush only draws me onward. The way is blocked. You are a heavy exhale, rustling fabric and metallic clicking. By the Emperor's grace, the ritual was successful. Your vessel's temperament pre presented a challenge. Its cold steel grip did not allow me to breathe freely even for a second. It was as if the depths of the ship housed not only machine spirits, but something other. Now I will retreat to my chambers to recover my strength. Send for me if you have need of me. Lord Captain, congratulations on acquiring a navigator. Spare me a few moments of your time, please. There are several matters that require your attention. First of all, I want to report on the condition of, of the station, Yurak 5. Had you opted to begin your visit to the RICAD system with a different destination, the station could have become critically unstable. Fortunately, the decision to immediately visit the representatives of Navas Nobelite brought us or bought us precious time. We can either send our forces to dis disassemble the station and procure technological components for our vessel, or attempt to save as many valuables as we can. I will not stoop to pillaging. Abandon the station we are leaving. Gather any components that may be of any use on the ship. Loot everything from jewelry to the very last manuscript. Well, I mean, there's not really anybody left alive there, right? And we have... I mean, Cassia is, if not the head of the house, Orcelio, or, or, or Celio, whatever it is. She's at least a high-ranking member, I think. So, I mean, taking it with us wouldn't be a bad idea. Plus, it, we don't want to lose it all if it's going to just, like, if the station's going to fall apart eventually. So loot everything, from jewelry to the very last manuscript. What does this do? You will gain Profit Factor 2. Profit Factor is a representation of the relative value of the rogue trader's warrant of trade and what opportunities and resources it can call upon. Huh. Yep, do that. As you command, Lord Captain. Profit Factor gain 2. With your permission, I would like also to remind you that we are still looking for an engine, an engine seer prime. Both the vessel and its machine spirits are in desperate need of oversight by an experienced tech priest. We are also missing some crew, and much more importantly, we have not yet located Heinrich van Kalix, the right hand of the Lord Inquisitor. Now we know for sure he was not at York 5, so keep in mind when making any future plans. Why is it always business with you, Victus? Couldn't you sometimes just visit and tell me how wonderful everything is? Thank you, Victus. This will be all for now. As it pleases you, Lord Captain. Alright. Any rumors? Ooh. Lord Inquisitor Xavier Kalakazar is a powerful, mysterious figure who plays a pivotal role in the fate of the Coronus Expanse. His power is so great that it extends even over rogue traders. Alright. Show completed quests. Lady Cassia is the only surviving navigator on the station. She must be immediately brought aboard the rogue trader's void ship, provided with the necessary medical aid, and prepared for a communal ritual. So if you save, like, other people here in that, could you have Cassia and then have somebody else be the navigator? It didn't seem like Felic would be an option. Okay, so this is the prison word, world, and this is the main world. Got a, a few quests there. I think we're going to go for this one here, the, the prison planetoid. Visit Rikadi Philia, the prison planetoid. But I think first we're going to go over the major or uh, Rikad Majoris here. Take a look at this. So we got Tithe Grad. grad? Undetermined. Begin scan. 50 XP for that. And nothing here. This is a dead world. 
the explorator feet explorator the explorator feet fleet is not aware okay okay cool 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 uh, I do actually want to get off the ship or get go back to the ship hold integrity how do we get up how do we go back Uh, da, 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 da. why am I not seeing like any option to go back? Oh, is here? Back to bridge. What is this one? Void ship management. Oh, okay. You got armor here. Mark 100 auger array. So we got shields, an engine, auspex, prow. So these are all our weapons. We can upgrade RAM. We can already upgrade it. Uh, scrap required. Or we can upgrade hull. Hmm. How much do we have, does it say, anywhere? This is our scrap. The resource used to repair the void ship. Use scrap to repair your ship and restore its hull integrity. Improve the parameters of your ship's prow and hull. Or upgrade the ability of its, of its posts. Scrap can be found while exploring star systems, collected after certain space battles, or purchased from merchants affiliated with various factions. Alright. Weapons, other... Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and increase the hull here. Okay, so that gave us about 14 HP. And I guess we'll include, or increase the ram too. Yeah, there we go. Neat. Alright, let's leave the uh, ship or ship view. And see if anybody has anything to say after. We're done. Abelard. Lord Captain. Nothing, okay. Lord Captain. I actually don't really want you guys to have a lot to say. Lord Captain, the ship informed me of our imminent meeting. Have the Vox Spirits brought you anything interesting lately? Forgive me, Lord Captain, I have no information that would be of interest to you at this moment. Alright. There's Cassia and Oov. <laughs> Words cannot describe how boring the bridge is without our stimulating conversations. Cassia offers you a reserved smile and waves at you in greeting. Tell me about yourself. I am a part of House Orcelio, an ancient dynasty of the Navis Nobilite. Since time immemorial, our family has served to advance knowledge pushing at the boundaries of the dark unknown. The Starway Atlas contains 2,843 routes that chart the sectors of the Segmentum Obscurus and reach all the way from the Coronas Expanse to Holy Terror. Hmm. So it's an, it is pronounced a, a nobility or nobilite. Nobilite. English is a shitty language. <laughs> um... Listen in silence. And uniting the Imperium's thousands of worlds. House Orcelio is bound by commercial packs to houses Galeatis, Ortina, Drotus, and... There is a dark blue knot tightening on your neck, Lord Captain. I can see my reply is not satisfying your thirst for knowledge. What is it you desire to hear, exactly? Sorry, Cassia. But I'd like to know more about you personally, not your family. You wish to know about me? I suppose I can help you with that. What would you like to know? So you've never lived anywhere other than your Act 5? Hardly. According to the chronicles of the house, I was born on one of the Orcelio worlds. Vert... Vert... Oh, what was it? Please forgive me, Lord Captain. My childhood memories are too vague. Sometimes I dream about the colorful birds that built their nests in the garden. 
or the servants dressed in purple livery, or the blue fog that rolled over the lowlands behind the palace. <laughs> but everything is covered in a rosy haze. Perhaps it is my imagination, not my memory, that is painting these pictures. Hmm. Tell me about your life on the station. My stay on the station was wholly dedicated to preparing me for my future duty. Astromancy, astrography, numerology, the histories of my house and the Imperium, as well as other disciplines. For many years, dozens of instructors tirelessly prepared me for my destiny. And once a year, great Regent Alronto would come to the station. He would entrust his beautiful vessel to my command, so that I could master the practical aspects of our art as well. Did you have friends? Someone you could turn to for simple conversation, not a discussion of yet another lecture? The Regent gave me a bird from a sunlit planet once. I tried to befriend it and make it sing, but for some reason it refused and died soon after. The instructors were too respectful of my duty to my house to waste precious time on idle chatter. Aside from them, there were only servants on the station. And you know they have their vocal cords removed, so they cannot break their vow of silence. And since the subject has been breached, Lord Captain, why do you not follow this honored tradition? Your decks are so garish. Uh, apologies, I meant noisy. The rabble don't just chatter. Sometimes they shout and even sing. Why do you allow such a lack of restraint? Rogue traders are highborn, are they not? You have a point. It's about time we made the deck quieter. Or have the lower ranks stripped of their vocal cords. Goddamn. A ruler cannot maim people just because it is her power to do so. On the contrary, it is the duty of every ruler to look after her subjects. You may find it difficult to believe, but... The practice of depriving servants of their voice is not particularly widespread outside House Orcelio. I like the noise people make here. It fills my ship with life. I kind of like the last one, even though it's the short one. Yeah, I I'm going to go with that one. With life? Oh, if only you could take my place and watch this kaleidoscope. Every voice is a flash of color. Every conversation a shimmering glow. Every argument is an unstoppable swirl of gaudy splotches. Cassia rubs her eyes tiredly. Your third eye, do you always conceal it? The navigator's open eye is baneful to whoever the warp's ruinous shine falls upon, and therefore it is the symbol of our power. We are the guiding stars of humanity, found worthy of an uncommon gift. And one of the duties that we bear is to guard our eye, even from wayward glances that may bear evil. Besides, I am aware that lesser servants of the Imperium may find our appearance repulsive. The Navigator Gene twists the features the rabble are used to seeing, and the magnificence of our role cannot be grasped by their feeble minds. She's a bit of an elitist. Yep. You are beautiful, Cassia. Do not let anyone or anything convince you otherwise. Alright. Do we got a little romance going on, or are we just being nice? Who cares for the opinion of the short-sighted rabble? They can serve us and die for us, and keep their thoughts to themselves. You do not look repulsive, Cassia. I cannot blame them. Navigators are mutants, albeit highborn mutants. I like, I like number three. I think this was a little too strong. Well, I guess not really. But, but we don't know each other very... Very well. I know if I was Imogene, I would not say this. But then again, you know, <laughs> I'm a bit of a coward socially. Uh, you do not look repulsive, Cassia. Perhaps my appearance does not terrify you right now. But this will not always be so. The Navigator Gene is unstable. My body is going to change over time. And only the God Emperor knows exactly how. It's called puberty. It, it, it'll be okay. In genuine terror, Cassia presses fingers to her lips, as if belatedly trying to stop the words from tumbling out. 
What does it feel like to guide a vessel through the warp? It may be difficult to describe. You see, every navigator perceives the warp differently. My mentor, Great Regent Alronto, always described his travels through the Immaterium as a journey through a vast wood with countless paths. And I, assisting him in the first voyages, futilely tried to follow his example. But the wood would not reveal itself to me. But everything changed when I found my own key to this mystery. You see, I've always brightened up my rare moments of leisure time by painting. You may recall there was a workshop in my chambers. As soon as I imagined the warp as a blank canvas, an indescribable feeling came over me. I moved the brush, going deeper and deeper into my own painting. Visions were hidden within the vibrant colors of my palette, and something inside me knew which should be brought out and which should be left behind. I woke up several days later, after the voyage was safely complete. I noticed that your love of painting is reflected in your speech as well. You associate so many images with hues and colors. The Emperor graced me with a gift. I can see inner life in addition to the mundane. You cannot know that a fruit has rotten from the inside until a blade slices it in two. I can see the rot from far away. It broils like swamp mud, oozing through the bright peel. Anger and boredom, sadness and joy. Everything that people shut away inside themselves is revealed to me like colors on the canvas of my world. Why don't we talk about something else? You will hear no objection from me, Lord Captain. Tell me about House Orcelio. As the only voice of our family on this vessel, it is an honor. As long as your questions are courteous, I will answer every one of them. House Orcelio has a rich history? Oh, yes. The navigators of the house came to the Coronas Expanse fairly recently, a mere 208 years ago. Before that, our ancestors expanded the borders of humankind's dominion for the glory of the Emperor, blazing trails to different corners of the galaxy. Who rules the house? Just as a rogue trader stands at the head of a protectorate, a Novator heads a navigator house. It is the Novator who decides where to look for alliances and which path their bloodline is destined to tread. As for our house, the transfer of power to a successor is currently underway. In the meantime, Great Regent Alronto Orcelio is ensuring the stability of the house. The young woman purses her lips slightly. Right, this is their leader, right? Patriarch or matriarch that rules over Navigator House, right? You lived in seclusion on a closed station until Felic committed his sabotage. So then you must be the, you must be the Novator's successor. Yeah, I mean, we th I think we know that already, right? Didn't we read something about that? Or didn't Felix say it? So, says Regent Alronto, nothing is decided yet. Some people in the house become enshrouded in rolling gray clouds at the thought of me becoming the Novator. But even more are bound with dull leaden chains. They think I am not ready for such a burden. Hmm. Well, you will be after our adventure's done. With your permission, I would like to talk to you about something else. By all means. What does your special sight reveal? Sister Argenta shines like a guiding star, inspiring resolve in those around her, seemingly inexplicably. However, I see a dark and ugly fog billow behind her, contrasting sharply with her shining light. It burdens the Sister of Battle. It drags her down. Yet Argenta herself is hardly aware of it. Seneschal Viserion is among the few whose colors are a pleasure to look at. Whenever the Seneschal speaks, heavenly crystal clarity spreads around him. And whenever he is angered, dark blue clouds condense over him. And in his rare moments of joy, a pure gleam of sunset pink caresses the souls of those near him. Out of your entire retinue, Lord Captain, he is the only one I would trust with my life. Interesting. It 
Adira's emotions are like a maelstrom, bright, unbridled, enveloping her form like a wondrous kaleidoscope of colors, and as dangerous as a twisting warp storm. The riot of colors hides the truth from my eyes. What exactly is driving this woman? Is it her own will, or... Or is it the Immaterium, Lord Captain? Well, that's a scary thought, huh? This is where I must beg my leave. I have enjoyed your company. Thank you for the conversation. You're very welcome. She is pleasant. If not a little creepy, because I know she kills people for her rituals, but you know, it is what it is. And it does seem like we're going to need to talk to her just about every time we get a new companion to see what she says about their colors. You can't talk, right? You, your lordship. Oh, you can. Okay. Greetings. Nothing new from you. I don't think um, Adira is going to have anything new either, but we'll check. What about you? Have you heard the name Fiery Reckoning? From what I can tell, it's a void ship of some sort. Okay, there's a couple of things. Okay. Uh, it's a void ship of some sort. Generous thinks for a moment, pursing his lips in concentration. I'm afraid it's not immediately familiar to me, your ladyship. Please allow me a moment. He starts rapidly tapping on the screen of his data slate. Hmm... Hmm. I say, House von Valencius did indeed sign a contract with the owners of a vessel with the designation Fiery Reckoning. There are transactions, records of the ship picking up cargo from Kiavagama. Well, this is odd. The data log ends there. Apparently, the ship had some interactions with one of the workshops on your, industri on your industrial world. I beg your pardon, your lordship. Ladyship. But... That is the extent of the assistance I can provide you in regard to this particular matter. I'd like to replace Lady Theodora's picture with mine. Janice brows or bows. Um. Oh God. Obsequiously, Obsequ Obsequ I'm pretty sure you had told me that this word how to say it, and I rather forgot. Obsequet. Ob uh, yeah, whatever. It will be done, Your Ladyship. Fuck this game. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Theodora, but... Uh, I wasn't that big of a fan of her. Uh, nothing from you either. Anything down this way? Anything new? No. Okay. I don't think there's anybody down here either. No. Okay. Let's go ahead and check out our chamber. See if there's anything new in there. I don't know how often things might change in this place. But uh, let's check it out anyway. I wonder if our picture's already up there. Oh, hell yeah. The majestic portrait painted by a skilled artist greets guests who have been granted permission to enter the Lord Captain's chambers. Oh, that reminds me. Somebody uh, said I might want to check in here about maybe uh, something that keeps the dialog boxes up longer. Where would that be? Maybe accessibility? No. Display? No. Mmm. No, I don't see anything. But then again, I am pretty blind. Do 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 do. I would like that, actually. Pause when a hidden item is detected. Okay. Anything else new in here? 
Do I need to look at you guys at all? Oh yeah, that's the um one people, and then we got a vault here. Yeah, I don't think there's anything new. Yeah, okay. Let's go ahead and head back out of here. Back to the bridge, and we're gonna head to the prison planet. Wait, how do I get out of here? Um. Hello, game. Am I stuck here? Am I dumb? That is the way out, right? There's nothing there. Uh-oh. All right, well, let's save it and then reload. Did we run into our first bug? Well, hopefully a simple reload fixes it. We really need to find like a merchant to sell all our stuff to. Got a lot of things in our cargo. Yep, there we go. Okay, cool. That's not so bad, so bad then. Alright. To the Karanus Expanse. Okay, so from here... We're going to move over here. Lord Captain, there is some commotion on the officer's deck. The Lady Navigator has left her quarters and is currently in the ward... in the wardrobe... in the wardrobe... the ward room... where uninitiated crew members are shunning her in terror. Perhaps you could find out what has brought Cassia to the deck. All right. Nobody better be miss messing with Cassia. She's precious. So polite. I love it. Make yourself at home. Hi, Lord Captain. My apologies. I... I did not notice your entrance. The Lady Navigator is engrossed in pursuing or perusing the dusty tomes which appear to have been neglected by the other officers, be it because of sloth or dullness of mind. When you walk closer, Cassia looks up at you, starts, and hides a weathered book behind her back. It pleases me to see you adjusting to life aboard the ship. Alas, a title alone is not enough to hold everyone's attention of all time, or all of the time. Point to the book in her hand. I see you're, you're fond of reading. What do you think you're doing here? I did not give you permission to leave the building. Bridge, rather. It pleases me to see you adjusting to life aboard the ship. Compared to Urak 5, your ship is a boundless world of unfamiliar hues. And yet, the abundance of bright colors can at times be wearisome on the eyes. The bridge and the decks are so clamorous. In my search for a place of quiet, I was fortunate to come upon this islet of serenity filled with rare tomes and practically devoid of color. Mm. The events that took place on Urak 5 must have shaken you greatly. Are you well? One should not underestimate the navigators of House Orcelio, Lord Captain. Like a shawl of pale smoke, 
A faint malaise hangs upon my shoulders, but it will not be the slightest hindrance to my duty to humanity and my duty to you. Cassia's response is reserved and pointedly de decorous. Clearly intended to create a distance between you. Your only attendant is your valet from York 5. Do my servants not measure up to your standards? Uh, no, no. It is not that at all, Lord Captain. It is just that Uve is Uwe. quite capable of carrying out his duties by himself. He is well accustomed to my... my whims and preferences. She nods... Uh, Genelia... <laughs> fuck me. Continue. Cassia cringes over, or ever so slightly. She cringes ever so slightly. Adjusts the adornment of her, on her forehead, then awkwardly hides her clawed fingers in the folds of her clothes. The unnatural appearance of navigators, navigators often becomes the topic of gossip among lowly servants and officers alike. It is unsurprising, then, that Cassia prefer, prefers the company of one who is used to how she looks. I thought you have ample time to calm yourself and your powers. Yeah, go with that. There are people on this ship who are far more impulsive and dangerous to others, and far less devoted to the God Emperor than a herald of the Navis Nobility. <laughs> but I did not need your words to see the shades of umber unease that whirl around your subjects whenever I am near. Were I not acquainted with such a reaction, I could have found their behavior in your question just now insulting. Oh. I mean, I meant no offense. <laughs> I see you're fond of reading. Oh, this. <laughs> I found this fascinating read on one of the shelves. And I must say, it has caught my eye. It's every chapter is written in verse. I find it so beautiful and enrapturing. Cassia carefully shows you the book, which turns out to be a collection of works by a Cadian naval commander and poet, Alia, Alias, or Alia, yeah, Alias Quint. Urak V had a vast archive of its own, of course, although. Most of the works within had to do with scholarly disciplines of some sort or another. Only in my sparse moments of respite was I allowed to escape into the pages of more embellished works. Cassia gently brushes the dust off the cover with her thin, clawed hand, her eyes filled with longing after reminiscing about her lost home. Lord Captain, would you... Kindly explain to me why you are pestering me with these questions. Inquiring about my mood and my needs, showing an interest in the books I am enjoying. You are behaving as if you possessed a shred of fellow feeling for one such as I. After an awkward silence, Cassia frowns and presses her lips. I beg your pardon, Lord Captain. That was no way for a navigator to conduct herself. Frightened by her own words, Cassia covers her mouth, pales, blushes, then pales again and hides her face behind a cascade of her snow-white hair. You have nothing to apologize for. Human emotions are natural, be they good or bad, and it's just as natural to share them with others. Quite right. So I would ask that you, mi that you mind what you say from now on. It is indeed difficult for me to feel empathy for a mutant. However... The crew's well-being hinges on that of its navigator. I believe this conversation has reached its natural conclusion. Uh, you have nothing to apologize for. Please forgive me. I cannot even understand myself right now. Your words and attention have reminded me of life on the station. Of Theobald and Felek. I do not understand. They were merely the keepers of Urak 5. So... Why do memories of those two make me feel a strange heaviness here? The primness or the primness of her expression cracks, revealing a great weariness beneath. She places a hand on her breastplate. At the same time, I find myself overwhelmed with new excitement and anticipation. At last, I have set foot outside my familiar walls. 
and into a world that I have only seen before in the pages of books. Your ship alone is a treasure trove of remarkable artifacts and curiosities. And just imagine the things that await beyond, but... <sighs> My delight must seem childish to you, surely. In your heart, you must be finding all this quite amusing. I do find it amusing, but not in like a... a bad way. What I find childish is your manner of addressing me as if I were your friend and your mistaken belief that anyone here would be interested in hearing about your emotional turmoil. God damn. I understand what you are going through. My own life was turned upside down not too long ago. I am not in the habit of finding amusement at the expense of my people. Just remember to keep your emotions in check. I am afraid I must return to my duties. I am not in the habit of finding amusement at the expense of my people. I don't really know what I'm... Am I being a dick there? <laughs> I don't think so. Right? She is my people. Just remember to keep your emotions in check. I don't really like her... I don't really like saying that. I guess we'll go with number two. Indeed. I... I did not know. That is to say, I could not have known... As it is the first time we are speaking in a circumstance so... private. My word, when I found this place, it was so full of officers. Why did they all leave? She glances around the room, growing somewhat sheepish. I do not tolerate idlers on this ship, and my officers know it. Perhaps my people did not wish to disturb you. I'm afraid I must return to my duties. Uh, perhaps my people did not wish to disturb you. I don't tolerate idlers on this ship either, though. I don't tolerate idlers on the ship. Well, she's reading. Like that's not idle. This is it. No, I I don't know. I guess it depends on what you're reading. Do not to tolerate idle idlers on the ship. Then I must take my leave as well. I am due to inspect the Sanctum Navis after the communion ritual and prepare the chamber for the upcoming warp jump. Thank you for your company. You're welcome. I like her a lot. I like her a lot. I think she is currently my favorite. Uh, I like Abelard a lot, too. The other two are okay. Like, I don't dislike them or anything, but I just don't... Adira's probably at the bottom. I do like Argenta a lot. If I'm even saying her name right. Argentina. Just looking around here. Anything here? Nope. Okay. But did I just start sprinting? Uh, I don't know. Maybe not. To the bridge. To the expanse. Oh my god, cutscene after cutscene. Or not cutscene, load screen. It's like I'm playing Starfield. Alright. We are running a little low on time, but we could probably get to the planet still and give it a, a once over. Lord Captain, sorry to disturb you. Victus pauses as if listening to something. It's pandemonium outside the bridge gate. One of the officers seems to be demanding an audience with you in person. I think I hear Master Vasarian's voice. Or Vasar yeah. In any case, I want to warn you in advance. Wanted to warn you in advance. Back to the bridge we go. I'm surprised if we get two interruptions in a row. I was thinking it'd probably be like one interruption per like trip kind of thing. Hello. 
Let me turn in my super chair. The everyday sounds of the bridge are disrupted by voices raised in anger. Abelard's voice, the loudest of all. This is not the conduct of an officer. These are the antics of a highborn brat out of a lark. Explain yourself, Lieutenant. Avrila Vent. The young woman stands standing before Abelard strives with all her might not to quail under the onslaught of her superior's anger. She falters, but then manages to look at him in the eye and say, I... I apologize, sir, but I must speak to the Lord Captain. Nah. Very well, Lieutenant. You may address the Lord Captain. Not least because I see you have already seen fit to disturb her. Your unauthorized appearance on the bridge and display of belligerence toward a high-ranking officer will be logged in your personal file without delay. Lord Captain. Lieutenant Avrila uh, Vent, requesting permission to speak. Vent falls silent and then adds harashly. On a matter of extreme importance and urgency. I will listen to what you have to say. Speak, Lieutenant. You may speak, but I want to hear a report, not a shouting match. Having two officers bickering in full view over the bridge is unacceptable. I will not tolerate this kind of conduct on my ship. Abelard, assign the Lieutenant an appropriate punishment. Lieutenant, you have one minute to state your business. You may speak, but I want to hear a report. I am sorry, Lord Captain. I... I thought that drastic times called for drastic measures. Vent exclaims haughtily, or hotly. This matter cannot wait. Any minute now, an assault, and an assault unit will be dispatched to the lower decks on orders to crush the workers' strike by any means necessary. But I am convinced that this step is unwarranted, and that the crisis itself was provoked by the actions of one of the senior officers. Vent is almost trembling with tension as she delivers her speech, her face extremely pale. Abelard, in no hurry to intervene, lets out a skeptical huff. Lord Captain, I urge you to investigate the actions of Seneschal uh, uh, Versarion, and to intervene in what's happening on the lower decks, because very soon we will have a mutiny or a massacre on our hands. Vint reels off the last words as though she knows them by heart. She has clearly been preparing to say them for, for quite some time. When she's finished, she casts an anxious glance at Abelard, then at you. There's an insurrection in the making aboard my ship, and no one has informed me? How did all this start? Where did Seneschal Versarion come into all of this? Nobody informed me? I would not deem it a problem worthy of the rogue trader's attention. The lower decks, as it so happens, are in revolt. Thirty-some years ago, we even had a revolutionary leader rise up who dared to establish workers' rules across the entire ship. It took a month to restore order, but even eight years later, we will we were still battling rumors of that about that. We were still battling the rumors that the hero had survived his execution. It was one of the. It was on the verge of gathering people to fight against the tyranny once more. Abelard scoffs. Needless to say, the rumors are baseless. As for the current situation, we have sufficient enforcers to deal with it. But on this ship, the word of the Lord Captain carries more weight than a salvo from a hundred bolters. I'm sure that the rogue trader addresses the ma the malcontents directly. She will quell the unrest. I dread to think that what problem you will dis you will disturb the rogue trader with next. Perhaps you ask the Lord Captain to break up brawls in the mess room? I have already given you the means to resolve this problem. You simply need to use them. If I may, your ladyship, sending a hit squad to crush the rebellion is a means of ignoring the problem, not solving it. How did all this start? The situation could boil over at any minute, so I'll give you the condensed version. It all began when the enforcers found a cultist amulet on the body of someone who'd been killed in a drunken brawl. We reported it up the chain immediately, arranged for a cleansing, a cleansing ritual to be performed, and opened an investigation. No heretics have been found alive, but the search has brought tensions between enforcers and workers to a head. Okay. Where does Seneschal Viserion come into place? I shall explain, Abelard intones grimly. I beg you to hurry. Time is running out. I will not hurry. Since my competence is under scrutiny, I shall speak for as long as I see fit. There is an established order to the way things are done on this ship, and one of the pillars of that system is that the rogue trader's attention is not distracted by trivial matters. It is the Seneschal's role to ensure that. I have always handled internal problems myself, so, of course, when I received information about cultists hiding on the lower decks, I took the matter in hand. As long as I live, not 
one of the vermin who murdered Theodora von Valencius will find refuge on her, on her ship. You are far too heavy-handed, Seneschal Viserion. Arrests, interrogations, mass punishments for entire sectors has driven the people to the brink, Vint says bitterly. Now there is a strike on the, on the lower deck, in Depot 4, to be precise. Three work clans are involved, but many more are passively supporting them. The situation could degenerate into an all-out insurrection, but when I reported my concerns, the only response I received was an order to dispatch an assault unit and crush the strike with maximum force. What is Depot 4? Depot 4 is one of the poorest sectors of the lower decks. It is home to clans of general laborers. They are not as valuable to the ship as the families who have served its specialized systems for generations. They are an easily replaceable resource and one which is now more besides given succor to cultists and minions of the, of the archenemy. Depot 4 is poor and troubled, but at worst that means drunken fights and illegal rot gut brewing. We have handled the workers on Depot 4 in the past. We would have done so again if the crackdown on Depot 4 hadn't been so harsh. Another important point to bear in mind, the problem is not limited to the sector. It is located on one of the most populated lower decks and everything that happens there has a knock-on effect on all the neighboring sectors. Abelard, what do you have to say about all this? I see no need to, do, to add anything. I acted within the remit of my authority, guided exclusively by the best interests of, the, of your protectorate and your personal safety. If you wish to confirm the rectitude of my actions for yourself, I have no objections. For my part, I urge the Lord Captain to go down there, go down to the lower decks, stop the assault unit, and speak directly to the people. You will see that they are not lying or harboring heretics. That way, you will stop the uprising before it begins. I've heard enough. I will go down to the lower deck and deal with the problem personally. I'm certain the Seneschal was acting within his authority, but I will verify the soundness of his decisions for myself. This matter is not w worth the rogue trader's time. Leave the bridge and don't ever disturb me again. I'm certain the Seneschal was acting within his authority, but I'll check it out anyway. Don't preserve you, Lord Captain. I thank you for your support. Abelard grits his teeth tight slightly. In an enterprise bordering on so uh, sophomoric. Suffer but please yourself, Lord Captain. However, I categorically insist that I escort you. Okay, um, yeah, we take the whole party. Going down to the lower decks. Okay, detour. Whew. I think we're probably actually going to end the episode shortly. We'll see, um, see what we got going on here as soon as it loads. Okay, yeah, it looks like, looks like we're safe right now. Check our journal real quick before we do this. What is this? Is this this? Yeah. The Lord Cap or the Lord Captain has received a plea to assess the the actions of Seneschal Viserion. As a result of Viserion's decision regarding a situation in one of the sectors on the lower decks, the problem now threatens to engulf the whole ship. Go to the site of the conflict with the Seneschal. The Lord Captain must assess the actions of Seneschal Abelard with Viserion. Or Viser Viserion, yeah. Versarian. I don't know why. That's messing me up. Okay. This requires the rogue trader to survey the situation in Depot 4. A junior officer subverts standard protocol to secure an audience with the Lord Captain. There is a problem on board affecting both the lower decks and the highest ranking officer, Seneschal Versarian. The situation is unusual and requires the intervention of the rogue trader. All right, so that's where we're going to end this episode, guys. In the next one, we will get to the bottom of this and then maybe make it to the prison planet. But until then, hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you later.